forever bound, soul be found, bring forth the spirits of the deep, hear my words, hear me speak, I say these words, you hear my voice, I call to thee, I summon you, hear my words, I pray, dark is light, light is dark, ashes to ashes, flesh to flesh, blood to blood, Dark God, from beneath their watery graves, come forth. Hear my words and come forth tonight. Right the wrongs of the past. Spirits, come forth. Hear my words. Feel the deep in the soul, dark God. Oh, with writing like that, how could this movie fail? So, Titanic 666 is a 2B original from the director of Hercules Reborn. Remember the one with John Morrison? Or Johnny Impact? Or Johnny Mundo? Whatever fucking name he wants to go by? Yeah, that one. That Hercules movie that almost nobody watched because no offense to John Morrison, but it got shoved in with two other Hercules movies that came out in the year 2014. Three Hercules movies came out in that year, believe it or fucking not. And the most successful one was the one with Rock the Dwayne Johnson. Also, his name's Nick Lyon, by the way. He also directed Isle of the Dead, and this was written by Jacob Cooney, who directed Three-Headed and Five-Headed Shark Attack. Ah! So you know it's going to be really fucking good. It's also written by Jason White, who directed, or who actually wrote the 2002 version of Scarecrow that I actually remember not minding. It wasn't great, but it was fine for what it was, and also Air Force Z and a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, this... Cast, such as it is, has actors like Jamie Bamber, who p played a professor that got a whole bunch of artifacts from the original Titanic wreckage and decided to display them and possibly sell them and do it for profit. Because any time a tragedy happens, just dig up the shit and do it for profit. That always works out well in horror movies, except it totally fucking doesn't. And this also stars... Anna Lynn McCord. Hey, remember the woman that put out that stupid goddamn video about being sorry that she wasn't Vladimir Putin's mother? If you remember that video, congratulations. You know who the fuck this is without even knowing her goddamn name. Yep, this stupid twat that thought it was a good idea to put that out is in this. She plays some influencer. And also there's Kisa Sharp as Captain Rhodes. Whoa, there's only fog machines and mirrors. Whoa. It's called Titanic 666, so it's not necessarily something that you would expect anything high, middle, low, or even subterranean class from. But it's from Tubi and The Asylum. Because obviously, any movie like this would have to have The Asylum's name stamped and stamped and embroidered and scoured and burned into its goddamn side. And front and forehead and everywhere. <coughs> because The Asylum would have to be involved in this. They've done films like Aquarium of the Dead that I reviewed last year that should have been a lot more fun than it ended up being. And they also did the Sharknado movies. It's called Titanic 666, so I don't really know what I was expecting, but I was expecting something a lot more fun. Unfortunately, this movie is often aggressively boring, to the point that I was almost laughing at how absurdly boring this thing was. There were times the thing came alive, but if you're going to do a movie called Titanic 666... Lean into the comedic elements. Just lean into the full-on bonkers bullshit. Don't try to treat it seriously. Why did they try to treat this seriously? Yes, you can respect the fact that um, a bunch of people died when the original maiden voyage of the Titanic happened, but this is with Titanic 3, Revenge of the Sith, The Revenge of New Hope. Wait, no, that's episode 4, where everybody got on the floor and watched the dinosaurs. <sighs> so there are other actors in this. <coughs> There's Lydia Hurst. Not of Hunter Hearst Helmsley fame, who's a goth redhead that decides to summon demons and summon ghosts of the past to avenge what happened to the original Titanic crew. That's pretty much it. That's really it for the plot. I don't know why I should even bother with the spoiler section right there, or you know, bother saying spoiler spoilers in a bit, because there really isn't anything to spoil. This movie turns out to be a lot more shit than it should have been because, yes, the movie wasn't going to be good. Again, it's called Titanic 666. Why isn't this movie more funny? Why didn't they have more fun with it? You are doing a movie that maybe has a million dollars put into it, and that's being fucking generous because I don't recall too many stars being in this besides the aforementioned dumb bitch that decided to have sympathy for Vladimir Putin. Fuck that goddamn person, and fuck Vladimir Putin. 
So, we see a brief encapsulation of the original Maiden Voyage, where there's a captain, and then there's Elizabeth, and they end up, uh, well, she ends up, you know, basically being uh, out on her own, down the only river she's ever known, except they're in the ocean. Be weird if the Titanic somehow managed to fit down a river. And then she gets attacked by a glacial zombie. Yeah, it was like literally a glacial zombie. I, I actually would have been happy to see a, a, you know, a living glacier attack people by this point. And then, well, the special effects, by the way, are absolute ass, but you knew that. You couldn't expect good special effects or good anything from a movie called Titanic 666. But, so the professor, uh, Jamie Barber, or Bamber, rather, decided to uh, bring a whole bunch of artifacts on board this thing for the Maiden Voyage, and they're going to go along the same goddamn course, because those who don't learn from history are doomed to fucking repeat it. And also the crew is talking, and one guy says, there's a pool going on in Vegas to term, you know, to bet on when we'll sink. Well, we're sinking, we're sinking. This is a German Coast Guard. What are you thinking about? Oh, I got a question. Why in the world did touchscreen technology look like it barely would have passed for Hunt for Red October that came out in 1990 and also wouldn't have had touchscreen technology considering when the Hunt for Red October actually existed? And I'm talking about the period. So anyway, um, why? There's so much to unpack with this. So this review might be just all over the goddamn place, as opposed to the level head, even nature that it's been so far. Why did the supply room with the luggage that seemed to consist of about five pieces of luggage? One, how did this Lydia, whatever her actual name, how did she get on there? I don't care about the names of most of these actors because none of it fucking matters because it's again called Titanic Six Six Six. Why did the supply room slash luggage room look like it was a rendition of Gibbs's basement in NCIS, just without the production value, the good lighting, or any of the humor? And also Gibbs being kind of a goddamn dick. And I'm not talking about the I'm not talking about the uh, character. I'm talking about the actor. So somehow this Lydia manages to get into luggage and then come out because anybody that comes out of some luggage immediately gets over. And no one notices this redhead's just wandering around. She ends up, you know, uh, picking up this violin. I think it was Captain uh, Corelli's mandolin. No, that was something else. And she picks up a hairpin thing. And it turns out that her great-grandfather may have had something to do with this whole thing. Fuck it. Spoiler. I don't fucking care. I'm just going to spoil the whole goddamn... It's It's a movie called Titanic 666. You watch it for the humor. It turns out that her great-grandfather has something to do with this goddamn thing. And that she is here to summon all the ghosts of the past. You see maybe five ghosts in this goddamn thing. It's like if Ghost Ship was directed by a sea cucumber and you took out the terrific opening of Ghost Ship. I have actually seen better student films that took like two years to make because they were filmed on weekends than this. That was hacked the fuck out. It was ridiculous how bad this was. And not even entertaining kind of bad. There were a few times where it did come alive and you could laugh. Like the opening dialogue that I put up. Or the opening dialogue that I uh, did before I did the title. Because that was a speech by Lydia's character. This Count Nathan Jones was the, uh, in fact, I pretty much call him malnourished Nathan Jones. He was a guy, Brian, what was his name? Uh, Joseph Gat. Gat! The Gatling gun, no. Um, she steals her grandmother's pen, does this whole ritual and everything, and then people start going all bonkers and shit because they see a few ghosts and the power goes out and a whole bunch of stuff and... Everything gets weird and dumb and people do really dumb things and they introduce characters that have nothing to do with the goddamn thing. It, seriously, these characters just pop up out of nowhere. We don't even see the, and then we just get these characters in there like they're automatically like, oh, we know who these people are. Maybe you just uh, shouldn't have cut stuff and left it on the cutting room floor and you actually should have explained a little bit. Oh, this is this person. They're a guard here. Or, oh, they have this little backstory or whatever. You don't have to give fleshed out backstories in a movie called Titanic 666, but you just throw characters out there and say, yeah, this is good. No, no, it's not. It's really fucking lazy. But again, Titanic 666. Fuck it, I'm going to get into spoilers here because this movie gets really goddamn bad. But yeah, there we go. That's pretty much it as far as anything that 
has to do with spoilers. So let's get into spoilers three. It's on Tubi. Check it out. Three, two, one, one point five spoilers. Spoilers. Okay. So yeah, uh, this Lydia the actress, her grandfather, her great grandfather was a captain of the Titanic, and she is here to take revenge because the professor brought all these artifacts on board and went into the deep sea and got all this stuff. Apparently he took James Cameron's funding and decided not to have the ego of James Cameron and just dig the stuff up. <laughs> um, the influencer couple, the aforementioned uh, Anna Lynn, you know, the woman that loves Vladimir Putin for no goddamn reason, and her husband get killed in a really comical way, a very comical way. They filmed this redhead doing all this stuff. And then... We have reached our final destination point. Oh, you have no goddamn idea. Final destination on a cruise ship. Watch them do that. Watch them do that for Final Destination 6. Did you know they're doing a Final Destination 6? You do now. Anyway, yeah, the captain... Uh, <laughs> the captain is resurrected. And it's her grandfather, and they do weird, spooky stuff where they're... They're just doing weird spirit stuff and everything and trying to draw any intelligence out of uh, any of the actress. And good fucking luck with that. So they suddenly decided to employ a fog machine because apparently somebody studied PlayStation 1 and N64 stuff and figured if we cover shit up with fog, nobody will notice how cheap the sets are. That's the thing about this. I don't expect a lot of, well, anything really reasonable or big budget or modest budget from something called Titanic 666. But good God, you could have tried. <laughs> go comic. Just go full-on comical, ridiculous, do weird gore, do weird stuff, whatever. You don't do that. Why do you not do that with a title like this? The funniest thing, the funniest death had to have been at one point where this guy, was a, the one of the ghosts was a violin player, and used killer violin music to dispatch uh, Miss Anna Lynn. Hooray! That's what loving Putin gets you, you stupid twat. And she's dead. Killer violin music, by the way. Killer violin music. That was hilarious. And then uh, a version of the Hope Diamond that I'm going to call the Dope Diamond because it was about the size of a chickpea. Your brain's the size of a chickpea. Nobody gets that reference. Nobody will. And <laughs> one lone engine crew guy is in the... Is, is on a laptop that looks like it was straight out of 2003... On a laptop, da, 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 doing this stuff. And then suddenly, ghosts besiege him, like three of the five ghosts that you see. And he gets killed by either a, by either a bunch, uh, by a, either a wheel valve off of a steam pipe or, or a, um, or maybe just the steam is so goddamn strong that it blows his head off. Seriously, this is stuff that's actually happening in the fucking movie. And then, there's a system override because the power went out. <coughs> the ghosts have taken over the ship. So it's a literal ghost ship, just without the intelligence behind ghost ship, which was all put in the beginning, by the way. Terrific opening for ghost ship. And it showed a wet Juliana Margulies, which I'm not going to complain about. And they go to Iceberg Central, where there's icebergs dead ahead, dead to the side, and dead sea scrolls, and dead... I don't know. There's just a bunch of dead stuff all over. Dead, uh, dead, you know, lines of dialogue just strewn about. There's this old lady that sees a ghost. I understand she really remembers the first Titanic because she was on the maiden voyage. She seriously looked like, you know, a living bulldog. And then a ne necklace cuts in and kills her. Again. Despite the fact that that was her first role after she died. It's like the ship has a mind of its own. And that laptop, by the way, that 2000s tech in 2022... I understand it's a small budget, but nobody had a laptop that looked like it was made in this decade or even the previous decade. Uh, some, yeah, sure, call them Mayday during this. That'll fucking work out. Does this sound like I'm taking the piss out of this movie too goddamn much? At one point, there's this character, Nancy, who sees the influencer couple die, and she's talking and showing the live stream. Here, look at this. Nancy, I can assure you the Titanic isn't haunted. This was a line somebody got paid to write. And the doctor, or the professor at one point, got besieged by this one ghost and tied up and everything. Man, being tied up by a ghost, I usually have to pay extra for that. Don't ask me. I'm not taking any more questions on that. Um, let's just say that was ectoplasm of a different variety. 
It was freezing like death, he says. <laughs> the boats, by the way, the ship is just going along, by the way. The, and by the way, this is slightly, you know, less coherent than Battleship, which is another movie I'll retro review at some point. They basically, um, they basically find the redhead. She blames, she blames the professor. You dug this stuff. You did it, you bastard. And <laughs> she starts screaming and chewing up more scenery. Those voices have been screaming in my head. Screaming. <sighs> and then, basically, the professor is going to watch everybody around him die. He doesn't have any connection to these people, but that's it. He's going to watch everybody die. Then she spouts more exposition. There was a lot of exposition spouted in despite the fact that we're about 30 minutes from the end of the movie. And <laughs> at one point, the ghost captain shows up. What are you going to do, shoot a ghost? It's reasonable. It's reasonable to ask that. And then the ghost just decide to finally show up 20 minutes in, or 20 minutes late, or 20, well, I mean, 20 minutes too late, but actually we were like 20 minutes until the end of the movie. The editing was absolute shit because shit, we can't show the ghosts because we can't afford that many special effects. So cut away, cut away, cut away, do this. Let's do 13 ghosts like stuff, except not even make it entertaining in a bad way like 13 ghosts was. Captain, the captain, you can't destroy the ship because the redhead's trying to steer it. See, goddammit, if you don't have a soul, you're going to steer that ship in the right direction. Sorry to any of my redhead friends. One of my uh, friends is redhead, and I can't help but say that. He even says that stuff about himself. So they're going to be on a collision course. But then... The redhead kills herself because she's the only one that can stop it. And then everybody gets the lifeboats and does a whole bunch of stuff and everybody dies and does stupid shit. And <laughs> the captain goes down on the ship. Hmm. Might be misunderstanding that. But only the captain and the professor are left. Then the professor dies. And then he comes back to life and attacks the captain. So the captain's crime was leading Titanic 3 on the maiden voyage and not actually doing anything wrong. Her crime was doing her job. Not that I expected much from a movie called Titanic 666, but you're doing a movie with this title, and you don't go full-on balls-to-the-wall stupid with it. You treat it seriously. You barely put any ghosts in there. No effort. Yet yeah, Tubi um, is kind of setting the bar pretty low on original content. I mean, Tubi is a great service, by the way. It's free... You can't get much cheaper than that, and you have to put up with some ads. But they have some movies. They have stuff like this, too. Sadly, I think this might have actually been a little bit better than Unborn, because at least I got a little bit of something out of this. Unborn was just aggressively boring. So was this. But goddamn, this is bad. The entertainment factor barely rises to C level, as in C. As in, boy, I want to see what happens with this goddamn cast, and if they go on to do anything better, Christ, I hope so. But the movie gets an F because it's fucking terrible. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.